Hi everyone, my name is Paulina and I'm Tara and we're here to set the record straight about Autism Spectrum Disorder or ASD because it's recently been a hot topic due to increasing classifications and identifications. As of 2010, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention reports as many as 1 in 150 children have ASD in the U.S. However, today, in 2016, it's now 1 in 68 children. Initially, there was a lot of confusion about ASD's conditions and causes. Even so, ASD research continues to have new findings. ASD wasn't narrowly defined, and we mean that loosely because it's a spectrum disorder, until recently when the diagnosis was restricted to individuals with severe social and or intellectual functioning. It is understood that ASD can range from mild to severe as there is a wide degree of variation of how it affects a person. In this video, we're going to talk about ASD's diagnostic information, contextual information, and strategies. Time for our first section, which talks about all of the diagnostic information of ASD. The federal the definition of ASD in the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA-04, is stated as a developmental disability significantly affecting verbal and nonverbal communication and social interaction that adversely affects a child's educational performance. According to IDEA-04, ASD is evident when a child is three years old or younger. Some other characteristics of ASD include performing repetitive activities, stereotype movements, resistance to daily routine, resistance to environmental changes, and unusual responses to sensory experiences. New Jersey defines ASD very similarly, almost verbatim, which shows the government and the state definitions are consistent with each other, and as such, agree to the conditions and characteristics of ASD. The Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, or the DSM-5, is very specific as it mentions children with ASD show persistent deficits in social communication and interactions across multiple contexts. It describes the multiple contexts as having ranges of social-emotional reciprocity, nonverbal communicative behaviors, maintaining and understanding relationships, repetitive and restrictive behaviors, stereotype movements, rigid thinking, and hyperactivity or hypoactivity to sensory input. This DSM-5 describes these symptoms must be present during the child's early development period. So for our next section, we're going to go into contextual information. Children with ASD are described as being on the spectrum, but what does that mean? In layman's terms, the spectrum varies from very high to very low levels of emotional, social, and cognitive functioning. So, at the high end of the spectrum, the signs and symptoms of ASD are mild. In fact, people with high-functioning autism usually have average to above-average intelligence and communication skills. Levels of functioning can be so high that outside people are unaware of a person even having ASD. On the other end of the spectrum, children with low-functioning ASD have severe signs and symptoms, which, of course, reflects their intelligence and communication skills. Students with low-functioning ASD are more likely to be challenged mentally, have epilepsy, and have limited expressive and receptive language. Children with ASD who are verbal may say words or phrases that do not have any meaning or are out of context. They may repeat words they heard at an earlier time. Additionally, some children with ASD may speak in a high-pitched, sing-song, or robot-like voice. Milestones are important for parents and physicians to monitor a baby's development, learning, and behaviors. Parents are usually the first to notice their child is not meeting these important milestones because they are typically missed during the baby's development. There are no medical tests for ASD, therefore trained physicians and psychologists must administer autism-specific behavior evaluations. Parents may notice that their child does not make eye contact, respond to his name, or that he plays with his toys in an unusual or repetitive manner. Like we've mentioned, ASD is a spectrum disorder, so cognitive skills of children with ASD vary greatly. The more severe the ASD is, the more a child's cognitive skills and development are affected. Regardless of where a child is on the spectrum, it is typical for children with ASD to have unevenly developed cognitive skills, where verbal skills are weaker than nonverbal skills. They usually perform better in tasks consisting of immediate memory and visual skills and have a tough time with tasks consisting of symbolism and abstract thinking. ASD affects the lower brain, which is responsible for balance and coordination. Therefore, children with ASD often face physical development delays. They also have low muscle tone and affected fine and gross motor skills. As such, it makes smooth changes and transitions from one movement to another very difficult for children with ASD. 
Children with ASD are mostly affected across social and emotional characteristics. They oftentimes find it hard to recognize facial expressions and emotions, use emotional expressions, copy expressions, understand and control their own emotions, and understand and interpret others' emotions. They develop slower emotional responses. Because of their social and emotional deficits, children with ASD find it hard to use their emotions and manage social situations to the point where they might display a lack of concern or misread social situations. Children and adults with ASD sometimes scan faces more than typical developers do, spend less time looking at people in the eyes, and spend more time looking at people's mouths. It's not that every individual doesn't want to relate with people, it's just that they could simply be lacking the skills to develop peer relationships. Common social deficits include the ability to open and conclude conversations, initiating peer interaction, joining peers while playing, decoding facial and body language, observing and mimicking appropriate social behavior, and predicting and understanding peers' emotions. It is possible for parents and specialists to teach social skills such that the deficit margin will not be substantial for some children with ASD. However, for others, the social sense may never be fully achieved. Every child on the spectrum presents unique abilities, symptoms, and challenges. Here are some of their strengths and weaknesses, which all depend on where the child is placed on the spectrum. Social skills and unwritten rules of social interaction, speech and language problems, restrictive activities and interests, sensory activity and the need for sensory escape, resistance to change, inability to recognize deception and comply with social norms, perceiving emotional state, grasping the big picture, and motivation in areas that are not points of interest. Conceptual skills to model complex situations, logical thinkers, exceptional memories, attention to minute detail, laser focus, encyclopedic knowledge in areas of interest, independent thinkers, and visual processing. Okay, time for our last section where we are going to discuss activities, strategies, and approaches for students with ASD. Depending on where the child is on the spectrum depends on if the child receives a vocational education, community skills, or a general education. Here are some of the possible accommodations and modifications. Adjust the number of items the student must complete because students with ASD can be overwhelmed easily. When they become overwhelmed, it is common for them to focus on the amount of work instead of the objective. Allow students to choose areas of interest to explore within the class, while at the same time restricting it to a few choices. Allow time to complete a task or assignment to be adjusted. Depending on the situation, the student might become either engrossed or overwhelmed. This is also a good idea for those with slow motor movements. Give the student with ASD a list of how to break down a task, which will let him keep track of how much work needs to be done, what work needs to be completed, when it will be finished, and what is next. Consistency and routine are very important to children with ASD. Children with ASD experience anxiety when they deviate from a schedule. The daily school routine should be predictable with clear expectations. Visual schedules eliminate the unexpected and enable students to prepare for transitions. Because transition times are often difficult for students with ASD, a check schedule transition cue should be given each time a transition is expected of them. Clear and consistent rules also need to be made with clear and consistent feedback on appropriate and inappropriate behavior. It is important that students with ASD are aware of the class rules and boundaries for themselves and for their peers. Coping plans can be very effective because it shows the student how to handle a situation when he is angry, anxious, or stressed. The plan may include a calming area, a sensory area, or activities such as painting or journaling. Social stories can be used to teach social skills to children with ASD. When a child is in a situation, it may be too confusing or difficult for him. In this scenario, a story may seem more concrete and understandable to the child. The story should highlight social cues, events, reactions, and use visuals that are plausible within the situation. Oftentimes, social stories make students with ASD feel comfortable and allow them to provide appropriate responses to a situation. Educate peers on what they might perceive as rude behaviors, as opposed to what the child with ASD is really trying to convey. Teachers should also work to expand social reinforcers and activities. Explain the rules of social exchange and work on labeling emotions. Teachers need to break down the components of the exchanges, rules, and emotions into verbal and nonverbal components. 
Because children with ASD are very sensitive to visual and auditory stimuli, a teacher needs to be mindful of where the student is placed in the classroom. His seat should be placed away from excessive movement and auditory stimulation so he can focus on the task at hand. The classroom's visual structure needs to help the student see what is expected of him and understand what is around him. As logical thinkers, students with ASD thrive in an environment that makes sense to them. Seats and workstations should be clearly labeled as there should be no room for confusion or misinterpretation on what each section of the room is utilized for. Assistive technology bridges the gap, which can be so crucial for students with ASD. Here are a few examples. PEX, or a Picture Exchange Communication System, is a low-tech picture-based system that allows the child with ASD to communicate non-verbally. It is a modified applied behavior analysis program that is not designed to teach speech, although it is indirectly encouraged. It allows students who have little to no communication abilities to communicate using pictures. Children who are using PECs are taught to approach a person with a picture of what they want in exchange for the item. There are six phases of training, but it can be taught to any age group. The pictures used with PECs can be photographs, drawings, or symbols. Activity schedules are extremely important. The first Then Visual Scheduler HD by Good Karma Apps is an iPad app that provides activity schedules for students with ASD. It is flexible and includes a diverse library of images, audio prompts, and video models for step-by-step -step schedules. Students can see the schedule by images or as a scrollable checklist with two different drag and drop formats. Okay, time for a wrap up. The definition of ASD is consistent with the government, the state of New Jersey, and the DSM-5, where its specifics are laid out. ASD is a spectrum disorder, which means emotional, social, and cognitive functioning varies depending on where the child is placed on the spectrum. ASD occurs at all cognitive and intelligence abilities. Social and emotional deficits are common across the entire spectrum. Teachers should use academic, behavioral, and social supports and strategies that will help the student function within the class. Assistive technologies can bridge the gap and keep students with ASD at 